What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Jesus Lazardo, who had 8 Ks in 6 innings, giving up no runs. His fastball was up to 99 miles an hour, and he had these wicked sliders, including this back foot slider. A great outing by the Jesus Lizard. He outdueled Adam Wainwright, who had 3 Ks in 3 and a third innings, but gave up 7 runs, 4 of them earned, and had this 2-seamer, as well as this pretty curveball. Shane Bieber had 4 Ks in 4 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 4 runs, and had these knuckle curves, and he faced Colby Allard, who had 3 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs, and his Ks came on these fastballs. Brett Kennedy had 3 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 4 runs, and got Ks thanks to his changeup, fastball, and painted fastball. He faced Patrick Corbin, who was meh, with 2 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 5 runs, and had this 92 mile an hour paint. Max Scherzer had a pretty nice outing, going 6 innings with 9 Ks. He did give up 4 runs, thanks to 3 home runs, but picked up Ks on his fastballs, his pretty curveballs, his changeups, and cutters. I've always thought Max's curveball was a really good pitch for him, so it's good to see him using it a little bit more this year. He faced Zach Davies, who had 6 Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 4 runs, and had these changeups. Chris Bassett had 5 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 3 runs, and had these beautiful slow breaking balls, as well as these painted sinkers. He faced Lucas Giolito, who had 4 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, and had these elevated changeups, as well as this fastball. Kyle Hendricks had 5 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 1 earned run, and got Ks on these changeups, looking, and got 1 on this sword, where he went into his patented over-the-top sword celebration K-strut, taunting his opponent. There is no room for this in baseball. I'll be surprised if Kyle doesn't get suspended. As you can see, even the Cubs' Twitter was shocked by this display of emotion. Of course, all of this was happening internally to Kyle, because externally, he was still the robot that he always is. Later on, he picked up two Ks and got absolutely fired up again. Okay, I might have edited that one combining two different plays, but whatever. We love our emotionalist Kyle Hendricks. He faced Wade Miley, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up four runs and had this fastball and cutter. Dane Dunning had four Ks in six innings, giving up one earned run, and had these fastballs, including this painted fastball, as well as this slider. And he faced Brennan Bernardino, who had two Ks in one and a third innings, and one of these Ks was this literal back foot curveball. Adding injury to insult. Clark Schmidt had 7 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs, and got Ks on his cutter, his knuckle curve, as well as his sweepers. And he faced Kyle Gibson, who had 4 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 4 runs, and this fastball and slider. Brandon Belak had 4 Ks in 7 scoreless innings, and this curveball and changeup. And he faced Kyle Freeland, who had 3 Ks in 6 in the 3rd innings, giving up 4 runs, and had this slider. Kent Maeda was outstanding yesterday with 9 Ks in 7 innings, giving up only one earned run, and had this mix of fastballs, sliders, including this back foot slider, as well as his splitters. He looks as good as ever, and here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see why that combination can be really tough on hitters. Maeda doesn't throw very hard, but he gets good movement and tunnels really well. He faced Zach Grinke, who had 3 Ks in 5 and a third innings, gave up six runs. He did have these wicked sliders, and I love this where he shakes himself off, probably just responding to the little voices inside his head, and then gets a comebacker on the next pitch. It doesn't have to make sense if it's Zach Greinke. Tarek Skubal made his return for the Tigers and was absolutely brilliant. He had six Ks in four no-hit innings and had really good stuff. His fastball was up to 98 miles an hour, and he had these vicious sliders. He also had the strikeout of the day yesterday on this 98-mile-an-hour Bohemian Rhapsody sword. Because mama, he just killed a man. You can see where Nick Allen's soul left his body on Pitching Ninja Soul Cam. And later, Allen was carried off by the legendary Ganon Coffin Dancers in a very touching 
but dynamic funeral. He faced J.P. Sears, who was also really good, with four Ks and seven and a third scoreless innings and had these wicked sliders. Surprisingly, some really good pitching between the Tigers and A's. Speaking of really good pitching, Logan Gilbert had a 7K shutout, giving up only five hits yesterday. He got Ks on his fastballs, splitters, and sliders, and ended the game on a strikeout and was absolutely fired up. This is the Logan Gilbert we all know and love. Speaking of loving players, Shohei Otani had 5Ks in five innings, but gave up five runs and also gave up back-to-back home runs for the first time in his career. But this was likely due to his fingernail and blister problems, hurting his command. His stuff, though, was pretty good. He got Ks on his fastballs, sweepers, and pretty curveballs. And the big story of this game was his matchups with Juan Soto. Because before the game, Juan Soto said he wasn't going to be afraid to shuffle Shohei's ass. Whenever he's stepping on the mound, I won't be scared to shuffle his ass. <laughs> so that raised the stakes for all of these at-bats. And what did Shohei do? He K'd Soto twice. After the second one, he apologized to Juan. Ever the good sport, that Shohei. I may have made that quote up, but there's no doubt that Shohei was thinking that in his head. Or at least I would have been. Shohei faced Joe Musgrove, who was outstanding with 11 strikeouts and 7 innings, giving up only one run. Musgrove dominated with his mix of cutters, change-ups, including this painted change-up, as well as his hammer curveballs. He spins the ball really, really well. And because you've subscribed to this channel, here is Joe Musgrove talking about how he releases his curveball to make sure it looks like his heater. Thumb underneath that keeps my fingers behind and on top of the ball so I can feel like I'm actually throwing the pitches. And like with all my breaking stuff, I like to think about keeping that on the side of the ball as long as possible and just letting the pronation, like the natural pronation of your hand when you release be what gives me the spin as opposed to somebody that's trying to rip across the ball that way. Just let the natural pronation be what rolls the ball off your fingers. When guys try to spin it, you usually cut yourself short and you'll yank short in front of the ball. And you, you will get some spin good, but the, the line that it comes out on doesn't, you know, replicate the fastball line as much as when you get the good extension and you're really like throwing the pitch. So, and like we talked about with that visual of the last 15 feet, the only way I can get the ball to be hard through that spot is by actually staying behind it and throwing the ball and not just spinning it where it has that big like looping pop, you know. Zach Eflin was really good yesterday with nine Ks and in seven innings giving up only two runs thanks to his combination of sinkers and curveballs. And he got many kills from the Ripper this game, including the Ripper putting Castellanos on the eternal IL. And he had this kill that produced so much blood that Eflin had to protect his hat against the blood splatter. Just gruesome stuff from Eflin and the Ripper. And he faced yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola had 12 Ks in seven and a third innings, giving up one run. He had this mix of sinkers, cutters, and of course, his wicked knuckle curves. And he helped produce his share of ripper deaths this game as well. If you like strikeouts and blood, this was the game for you. And here's an overlay of Nola's fastball and knuckle curve. And you can see just what makes that knuckle curve so tough on hitters. It comes in looking like his fastball, and then disappears as the hitter's ready to swing. Great work by Nola yesterday. Now onto my filthiest relievers. David Bednar had these overpowering fastballs. Lucas Ersig had this 98 mile an hour paint, which Baez probably would have swung at if it was two feet off the plate. But because it was painted, he had to argue. But it was a strike despite Baez's usual perfect eye. Jacob Junis had these wicked sliders. Josh Spores had this curveball and slider. Ron Marinaccio had this painted fastball. Seth Martinez had this sweeper. Craig Kimbrell had this filth with fastballs and knuckle curves. Nate Pearson had this wicked slider. Lucas Sims had these nasty sliders. Yancy Almonte had these six sweepers. Reese Olsen had these fastballs and sliders and picked up five Ks in long relief yesterday going five innings, giving up only one hit. But my filthiest relievers of the day yesterday was a tie. First is Jordan Romano for this absolutely ridiculous stuff. His slider was vicious, 
picking up two White Castle specials in one inning, including one to Burger. What a coincidence. And my other co-filthiest reliever of the day was Shintaro Fujinami. Fuji unleashed this display of heaters up to 102 miles an hour and just blew everybody away. When Fuji is in the zone, his fastball is electric. I just have to imagine some contending team is going to pick him up. His upside is too good, and guys that throw 102 don't grow on trees. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. As some of you might know, I helped create this shirt for Sarah Langs, who's suffering from ALS. Sarah is without a doubt one of the nicest and best people in baseball. And sales of this shirt have raised well over $70,000 for ALS charities. And I thought this from the Yankees was awesome. Great work by Garrett Cole, Aaron Boone, and the rest of the team. And a reminder, you can pick up this shirt at rotoware.com. You guys are throwing out the first pitch today. <laughs> Sarah, Thanks. you are uh, extremely impactful in this uh, industry. And um, so we're just thrilled to have you and be able to honor you. Thank you so, so much. And good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> What is up, everybody? My picks of today today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Jose Barrios for 5Ks or more, then take Justin Steele for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Kodai Senga for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 